You gonna give me a countdown? Oh. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Eyewitness Show with Nikki George. Today we have our repeat special guest, my twin sister, Lavelle Gathings. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you, Nikki? I'm doing good, good. All right. So last time that you were here, we talked about um, witnessing and we talked about witnessing on the on the on the job in the workplace. But today we want to switch gears and we want to talk about uh, taking the leap of faith, stepping out on faith, because um uh, before we get into that, I would love for you to tell us about yourself. Okay, yes. Yeah. So my name is Lavelle Gathings, and I have been in law enforcement for like 17 years. And I started at Mecklenburg County Jail, where I was a juvenile officer, a transport officer. I worked the males, the females, uh, the whole nine. Um, that's actually where I first uh, started to learn how to use a weapon, because I was a transport officer. Um, then from there, I went to work uh, company police at the nuclear plant at Duke Energy, where I was there for 15 years. Um, and that's where we carried the AR-15 and the 9 millimeter. That was our everyday duty weapon. And there I learned a lot about, you know, security and that type of thing. We're there basically for international terrorist attack, that type of thing. So um, so that's kind of the, the main thing I've done in the last like 20 years as far as my career is in law enforcement. And from there, I ended up last year, started with my uh, concealed carry uh, uh, career. And I had no idea that working in law enforcement that I would be a concealed carry instructor. So it's just another way that God is always working behind the scenes and we never know what he's doing. And the entire time, my entire law enforcement years, I never even once thought of me being a concealed carry instructor. So there um, also... Um, licensed life insurance agent, photographer. It's just, it's just been, it's been great. <laughs> I, I have a lot of loves and uh, those are definitely uh, some of the, the top three. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So yeah, so you work with um, Duke Energy for a number of years. And so we're talking about faith. What was it like for you to decide to have this uh, steady income, this uh, very good uh, you know, well-paying career uh, where you traveled all over and to say that I, I you know, what, what were your thoughts in that process? So when that uh, took place and I, you know, I, I really believe that God was, you know, letting me know that I needed to leave before I left. So I kind of was felt like I was kind of pushed out in a way. Um, but when I finally left, that's when I realized that I didn't trust the Lord like how I thought that I did. And that was a very, very eye-opening, humbling, very, um, you know, it, it, it kind of took me because, you know, I've been going to church all my life and, you know, I know all the scriptures and, you know, all those things. But when the rubber met the road, I realized that I was afraid. I was like, well, what is this? And what about this? And what about all these questions? How am I going to pay this? And and then that's when I realized that I didn't trust the Lord like I did. And that's why I just had a come to Jesus moment and just like, Father, I apologize that I don't trust you like I should, but would you help me? And it has been an amazing journey since then. And I wouldn't take anything back because there's it's just a, it's just a great adventure when, you know, we can just be open with the Lord and say, hey, I, I don't trust you like I like I thought I did. And to see him build your faith or help you build your faith uh, to where, you know, it's like, hey, I can walk on water. I can move mountains now. You know, now it's just it takes a, a process of learning because he's always teaching us during the process. So that's very good. And so uh, you have uh, had different experiences as far as trusting God. And now I'm sure that it was just the smoothest cake, right? You could just, every day was just easy. Or did you have any opposition? Um, yes, I definitely had opposition. Um, like I was saying, as, as far as fear, fear can be an opposition of, you know, can I really do this? Because you know, it's, you know, when you're in work, it's like, hey, well, how are you going to do this? And, you know, all the chatter, pretty much. You get mm -hmm. all the chatter and not just from the outside, from the inside. We get chatter mm -hmm. on, you know, we we have to stop the negative talk on the inside, the doubt, the unbelief. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, 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 I feel like those were my opposition, you know, 
the fear of what if I don't succeed? What if it doesn't happen? What if you, you know, on the street? What if you can't make it? You know, all these things that those were, were my opposing factors, but I had to decide, you know, it's a crossroads that you come to. You have to decide. It's either I'm going to sink or I'm going to swim. It's either I'm going to trust the, trust the father or I'm not. And so when you get to that place, it's like that's where you, you know, you start growing up uh, even more because, you know, we're always growing. But mm -hmm. it's like what like the scripture said, going from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. So that's when I, I, I saw that I was going to this next place. And I and those fears, I had to decide and we all have to decide if they're going to hold mm -hmm. me back or if I'm going to mm -hmm. spring forward. And so I'm still springing forward. <laughs> That's that's excellent. And a lot of people, sometimes we get stuck in this place or it was a period, a good period of time where you felt like you were supposed to leave, but it was kind of hard to. And some people, you know, we fit, we hit, we have this moment and those those oppositions, they're very real. And sometimes we we just stay where it's comfortable yes. and we won't take that leap of faith yes. because, like you said, we can't see the yes. big picture. So what, what are your thoughts about the big picture? Yes. So, right. Exactly. I definitely was afraid to step out. I believe that the Lord was telling me to leave, but once again, how am I going to pay this? How am I going to pay that? How am I going to take my trips? How am I going to, you know, do these things? And, um, so I end up, uh, you know, get into a, a car accident, which I don't believe that the Lord brought it, but it was something that it made me sit and I had to think. I was able to sit down and think. I was, couldn't, wasn't going to work and I had to sit and think and have more time with the Lord. And that's when I began to see, hey, you know, and even the doctors were telling me like, you know, the 50 pounds of the gear, you know, 12 hours, nights, weekends, holidays, it's not like it's going to get better. And so mm -hmm. I started really praying with the Lord. And um, and so I took the step. But when I really took the step is when I realized I was trying to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. But we can't see the big picture, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. not all at once. Mm -hmm. And so the big picture is that we can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't see the big picture. We have to just take the steps that's in front of us. Right. What is the step that's in front of me? I trust the Lord with all my heart that this is what I believe what he's telling me to do. And we step out on it. And trying to see the big picture is what held me at my job for so long because I couldn't see the big picture. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking, the big picture. Yeah, we can be analytical. Oh my gosh, yeah. analytical. Yes, we're trying to add up one plus one is not equal to. I'm not moving. It's got to, you know, you got to give me the pros and the cons and it's got to make sense. And, you know, if, if we do that, this isn't going to fall through. So this is not a good idea. I'm going to stay back in my comfort zone. But yeah, so and I definitely would put my prayers out to all the analytical people out there because <laughs> I am one of those. And I'm working on that because when you're analytical, you can't really flow with what God is doing because it doesn't make sense, but you can't, we can't put God in a microscope. And so trying to be analytical stops the flow of the Holy Spirit. It stops the flow of God speaking to you because it doesn't add up in your little tiny world or in my little tiny world. So yeah, that the analytical thing was a very, very, very big uh, hurdle that I had to uh, run over, jump over. Okay. So uh, we're going to take a moment. I have um, a comment here. This is from Satoria. She says, ha, exactly. That's just it. We can't see the big picture. We have to trust God. It's by design. So yeah, I love that comment. And and so now I want you to, to we're going to kind of switch gears. I want to talk about your faith in action. That was one big scenario because you had an open door and people sometimes say doors of opportunity, they come They're Sometimes they're not noticed. They sit by silently waiting for somebody to notice them. Right. Yeah. So you had an open door and you took the leap of faith. So tell us about that. Yes. So I was talking with our cousin and um, we were just talking about, you know, she's also a photographer. And um, she was like, well, hey, have you ever heard of, you know, Festival in the Park? You need to put your you know, work there. And I said, you know, I have tried to do that like two or three times, but it's just falling through. Mm -hmm. So while I was talking to her, I 
was looking on the internet and I saw that it was in like two or three weeks. So I get off the phone with her and I just call, randomly call. And the lady, she picks up the phone and I'm like, hey, you know, are there any spaces for vendors? Are y'all accepting vendors? She's like, no, we're not accepting uh, vendors uh, anymore. However, someone just canceled 15 minutes ago. Do you want the spot? <laughs> how do you say no to that? Somebody tell me. How, how do you say no to that? And I just felt like that was one of the moments that God was talking. It was up to me to make a decision on if I'm going to let all the fear of how can, how, when, how am I going to do this? All mm -hmm. those questions. It was, I had to make a decision in that split second. But I just, I could not shake my mouth to say no. <laughs> <laughs> so I took that as it had to be the Lord. It had to be the Lord. So I said, yes. And the lady was so nice. She even tried to talk me out of it, which I thought she was nicely trying to talk me out of it. But I thought that was good because what she was doing was having me to count up the cost. Mm -hmm. But she didn't know I had already had pictures. I had, you know, I just had to do some, you know, I did have to do some things, that, but I did. I wasn't starting from absolute zero. Mm -hmm. But um, so, I, you know, I get everything together. I, I get there. I'm, uh, mommy and Marshall, you're one of your handsome sons helping me put up the tent and they come around they're asking for Lavelle I'm like uh oh I'm thinking maybe I got I'm in the wrong space you know I'm doing something wrong you know and they asked me to be on WSOC channel 9 TV the next morning I'm like what is going on and these are like the bread all these breadcrumbs that the Lord always drops he always drops breadcrumbs for us mm -hmm. and once again, I had to make a decision like, like TV. I don't know about that. Uh, uh. But it was like, hey, this is the opportunity. And you had to think about how did it come? There was no space. And somebody canceled 15 minutes before you called mm -hmm. and gave you the spot. Now mm -hmm. they're saying, asking, can you be on TV in the morning? So I did that. That was amazing. Great experience. Um, and end up winning second place. Because you have to enter um, your some three pictures, and I didn't really know what pictures I was gonna send, and that was kind of hard too. Because I'm like, what pictures do I bring? How much, you know, the printing, the frames? I had all these things. The tent, I'm like, what is a tent? Where even get a tent from? And I had to do all these things like within three weeks. And and they were some of the vendors were coming over to my space because they had to see who was the person that did this in three weeks when they've been playing it like all year. I'm like, the Lord, I'm telling you, it's the Lord. I even wore my shirt uh, standing on his promises, uh, you know, that weekend, just a, a way to bring conversation. And, you know, people began to talk and begin to witness. And I began to tell my story of how I was even there. And uh, it was a great testimony that I was able to share with many, many people there. Uh, at the festival uh, that day, I didn't mean to keep going on, but <laughs> no, no, you're fine. That's your that's the award that you uh, yeah. the ribbon that they put on your tent, and so we were so proud of you for that. And and, and the so check you, and the check. Oh, don't forget about the check. <laughs> and so you know, it was step by step. So you just you know, a door opened. Uh, it was one other step that you had to take. There was work that you had to do because you you know. A lot of times we feel like if, if God is blessing us and if God is in the moment, then, hey, it's going to be easy. Then I don't I can just fold my hands up and sit back mm. and relax. So mm -mm. What do you no, about no, that? no. <laughs> no. So, so something I've come to realize is that once the harvest shows up, we don't have to believe God for it anymore. Mm. It showed up. Now it's time to work. Go out and get it. Yeah. Right. Yes. So it showed up. Now go to work. <laughs> and that's where, um, you know, like I say, I had to go make the purchases. I had to go get the tin. I had to go get the sizes of the pictures. I had to go do research on, you know, uh, the best printer and the frames and um, being up and getting it together. You know, just the work that it took. And I think a lot of times uh, we, we, we have to understand that work is the harvest 
And if we don't, if we just leave the harvest out there, it'll just go bad. Mm -hmm. So harvest is work. And so we can't just say, it, we, there's a there's a work labor to enter into his rest. Mm -hmm. We do labor, we trust God. We trust God that he's gonna do it. We labor to trust him. But once the, once the the blessing, once we what we're looking for shows up, now now we have to work. So that takes away the we just wait for the Lord to sit it down on our lap and we finna eat these chips and put our feet up. <laughs> There's a balance in that where we do have to balance it. But there is also a rest and it's a work. And only the whole, really, I believe only the Holy Spirit can really teach us and he's continuing to teach us how to do that. That's good. We're co-laborers with Christ for sure. And then, like you said, there, there is a there's a part that we have to play is what I'm hearing you say. And there's a part that God does. He's going to do his part, but we also have to do our part. Right. And so uh, that that is really good. So encourage the person who feels like I, I know maybe it's this business because you're an entrepreneur, you are starting you know different businesses, and and so I know that God is putting this on my heart to start this business or maybe this website, this blog, or um or to you know step away from my job, what whatever the case may be, is something that God you that that the person feels like God is wanting them to do. Mm -hmm. but they're being held back. They're kind of afraid to do it. You know, what, what words of encouragement would you give them? I, I will say that uh, the father is, is with you no matter what. Mm -hmm. he, he's going to be there. He's not going to let you fall. And when your heart is truly to do his will, your heart is truly to please him. I'm talking about with all our, you know, uh, imperfections, all our faults, the whole nine, everything. But he still loves us and he's still going to be there with you. So it is my firm belief that when you have that working and you believe that God is telling you to do that and you know what I'm saying, you're not really sure, then you step out. You There's something that you can do in that direction. You know, it may not be, a, a, you know, 18 steps, but you can take one step. And you can take another step. And as you're stepping, God's going to drop breadcrumbs. I love saying breadcrumbs because it's indicated that or conversations with God. He's having a conversation with you. He's saying, yes, keep going. This is the right direction. Mm -hmm. Or it may be a, 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 a block, but that may be not right now mm -hmm. or hold up because the whole process he's cultivating in you. So no time is ever wasted. Like how he grabbed up all the scraps. He's never, ever going to waste time. So while you're learning and you're stepping out on faith, he's going to drop breadcrumbs and you're just going to put one foot in front of the other because it, it's going to take those steps. You have to take those steps. And no matter what, I believe that as you step out, he's going to be there. He's going to make it happen. It's just that I believe that faith and patience is what is required. You know, you have to have faith, but you got to have patience too. If you have one without the other, it's going to be an issue. So you got to have faith. But if you don't have the patience to wait and see it come into fruition, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Or you have patience, but you don't have the faith to see it through. That's going to be a problem. So all these times we're just cultivating God is growing us steady, stronger and stronger. But with faith and patience, we will see the promises of God. So I say step out. God's going to be there. As long as you're doing the work, you're trusting him, you're bouncing out the faith, you're bouncing out the work. God is going to be there. I'm saying step out one step at a time. He's going to be there. He's not going to let you fall. So do it. <laughs> awesome i love it i love it and so we've had a lot of comments come in <laughs> uh gifty says amen harvest's work says edna she said congratulations sis thank you and so um you know god is so good god is so good so it's been well for you right now it's been a three-year journey of you uh, being off of the um, you know, I would just say security of, corporate you know, a, a, a corporate, yeah, a corporate job and, 
Um, and God has, you know, met every need. The bills stay, you know, paid and the lights stayed on and you, you know, uh, able to get back and forth. And so these are things that we can be thankful for. And so what other thoughts would you like to leave with um, our uh, guests here today? Um, I will say that, you know, I always go back to love. You know, love is what everything hinges upon. And when you're when you have love and you're uh, doing things out of love, uh, you you just can't fail. It, it's what everything stands upon. Our relationships, you know, uh, doing right by people, uh, doing right by you know, you know, people that, that we like and that we don't like, <laughs> you know. And once we have uh, the love, then we're able to work. And when we're working, it's showing. It, the love is what's showing. And so when we have, whether students or clients, we're, we're able to be an open vessel. And even when, like during classes, you have people that may call and ask you to pray for them, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, or their views may be, you know, anti-Christ, but we're still able to stand in love and share, well, this is what, the word says so this is what i believe because of the word and this is what the father has done for me and so i think when we have love it it stems off from all the rest of our life whether work school uh business mm -hmm. when we have love then it's able to filter through and people are able to receive us and we're able to affect other people in a good way mm -hmm. so um i think love is is very very important and once again to know that god is always working whether it's just a smile a kind word to someone these are the things that god is always using us he's using us as vessels all the time you know to to be a light you know we we are the light and we can be the light while we are working while we're in our definitely you know when we're in our families you know and so i just think that love is is something that i would say what everything that you're doing that we're striving for we know that god is love and we cannot uh whatever we're doing is not going to work if love is not the foundation of what you're doing so i would say that's like a very very big big thing it is and i hear so many uh you know the scripture that faith works by love and so when we're talking about taking a, a leap of faith you know, you, you have to have that love piece working. And then it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So this is one of the ways we actually can bring joy uh, yes. to the father while he's bringing joy to us because he's that thing that we're desiring or we're believing him for. He's yeah. uh, bringing it to pass. And yeah. so it's, you know, it, it's a win win. So God is, is being pleased and he's able to. Uh, you know, bring glory uh, to himself through your through the life because he's answering your prayers and um, he's uh, increasing and growing your faith. And so I think that that is so cool. And so Gifty says he's watching from Ghana. Isn't that awesome? Oh <laughs> wow. So, oh, we are so glad to have you watching and, and uh, wow. we appreciate you. And uh, so I just wanted to take that, that moment to, to do that. And I and also so want to to say, Nikki, also that um, when we were talking about love, you know, when I was talking with, you know, our cousin Chandra, you know, she referred me uh, to a, a lady and that was just love. I mean, she didn't have to do that. And then mm -hmm. other people had referred me to different galleries in the city. Like mm -hmm. once the Festival in the Park took place, then mm -hmm. they were given my name to you know, two, it was like two or three galleries, especially Coffee and, Coffee and Thompson on Providence Road. I'm very, very, very thankful for them. And people that I don't even know told a gallery about me. And then that gallery told another gallery, you know, for me to get in touch with another gallery. So it's like everything started with love, but it's just a domino effect. It just, it mm -hmm. comes back and it, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I'm just so thankful for that because you know, just moments before that phone call, it was completely, when we say the big picture, it was completely not in my big picture at all. <laughs> I did not see it. It wasn't even in my peripherals. And here I am. I'm also the extravaganza, 
You know, I met with the extravaganza and they are being very, very generous uh, to me to, you know, do some work in, in January. So it's just a lot of things have come up. But, you know, like I said, I was I was showing my light. I had my, you know, witnessing out there and other people were coming to me. And next thing you know, I got galleries and different uh, connections that God has brought and another opportunity to show love and to show the love of God, of the Father, through us and through people. All right. So he sets a lot of times uh, open doors right before us and it's up to us. We don't have to, you know, like you didn't hear thus saith the Lord, go and, <laughs> you know, set up this, uh, this, you know, take this invitation. But if our heart is being pricked to, 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 we can move forward. We don't have to be afraid. We can know that God is with us. That's what I hear you saying. That he's not going to let you fall. If you step out on faith, then he's going to be right there and he's going to keep opening doors for you. And that just that one single act, I think about how many more doors opened up, how many more connections that you made, how much more love you were able to, to share. And so, um, so I would say for people to take that invitation, you have any other closing thoughts? Um, I just say, you know, just trust God. Don't, you know, fear is, is a, it's a, it stifles us. It, it stagnates mm -hmm. us. And I would rather work at getting the fear out than to go my entire life afraid, you know, mm -hmm. because God is with us. He's going to be with us. So don't let uh, fear, don't let it hold you. Even if it takes three months, six months, a year, who cares? But I would rather for it to put that time in with the Lord, with other believers, with the word, praying. Hey, what do I need to do to get this fear out or any opposition that's seen or, you know, negative talk or unbelief? All those things. I would rather work, put that work in so that I can get the harvest mm -hmm. and, you know, don't let it hold you a hostage for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And you talked about chatter. So sometimes we have that internal chatter and we have the external chatter. You want to explain that? Yeah. So chatter is like, I always say, you know, and, and be well-meaning people sometimes like, well, I wouldn't leave that job. Why this and how that and how that. Now, if the Lord is saying leave and, the, and, and chatter over here is telling you to stay, we, we have to we have to be able to shut the chatter down mm -hmm. or, you know, sometimes people, because they're afraid, they don't, they don't want you to, to step out on faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're like, Hey, if it was me, I'd be afraid. So don't you do it. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think those are, are chatters, you know, or people that just don't know anything about anything. They are just speaking out of their own emotions, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and also the chatter from the inside could be unbelief. Like, well, will I look like a fool? Will I not be able to do this? You know, what will they say about me? Will I be, you know, will I be upset with myself? All these things are chatter that we have to say, we have to just shut it down and say, Father, I don't want to hear anything but you. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? Mm -hmm. Show me lead me, guide me, make it clear, be a light to my path. Mm -hmm. We have, we have to, we have to tur turn off everything, shut it down. That's good. And we've been shut down. So now we have opportunity. I'm just saying with COVID, you know, we've had a lot of opportunity to shut things down, but some of us, we kind of keep, keep busy, but you're saying we need to shut it down and hear God. What are you saying? I want to hear your voice, not my own voice, not the, the voice and opinion of man. What are you saying? I think that's a powerful thing to say. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I say the chatter. We got to cut the chatter, hear God, and then step. There you go. I love it. So we've had a few more uh, uh, comments here. Chiquita says, all it takes is a mustard seed of faith. Amen. And then comes the domino effect. Oh, that's Amen. so true. Gifty says, a step of faith opens bigger doors. We're so excited to be a part of this family. We're so excited to have you as part of our family as well. 
And Satoria says, such great advice. Get the fear out so you can live the rest of your life beautiful. Amen. 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 Well, awesome. This has been a wonderful. Um, I want um, everybody, tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. If anybody uh, wants any uh, concealed carry classes or, um, mm -hmm. you know, your, to know about your artwork. Yes. So, thank you. So um, you could just, uh, my website is Milka, M-I-L-C-A-H, concealed carry. Dot com and Milka is queen uh, when it's translated, you know, in, in Hebrew, it means queen. So that's where my concealed carry classes are. I do them like maybe twice uh, a month. Next month, I'm taking off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my number uh, reach me at 980 655 8686, and that's for all whether it's you need a uh, life insurance policy or pictures for your home, you can call me on the on that number as well. Awesome. You have Lavelle Studio. Oh, that's my yeah, my, my website. Lavelle Studio is my is my website. Lavellestudio.com. We can see some of my some of my pictures. I don't have all of them on just some samples of, of my pictures there. And if people want like on on for their restaurants or for their business or for their home, I have like Italy themes, China themes. Uh, Spain things, you know, just to, to have the nice ambiance for your home. So I also have those as well. Awesome. All right. Well, we love you. I appreciate you coming on here. Uh, thank you for telling us about taking the leap of faith and how we are seeing um, that, you know, you have stepped out on faith and, and God has rewarded you. And like, like um, our comments have said, you know, uh, when you take one step, it, open, it leads to another step and the doors just keep opening. And so uh, we're, we're just thankful. Uh, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we love you all and we will see you next week. God bless. All right. Love you. Thank you. <laughs>